Hey, my name is Michael Campion. I play Jackson Fuller on Fuller House, and you're watching FaceTime with Todd Wharton. What's up, y'all? This is Lexi Hayden, and you're watching FaceTime with Todd Wharton. From Times Square in New York City, it's FaceTime with Todd Wharton. With special guest, Michael Campion. And musical guest, Lexi Hayden. And now, here is your host, Todd FaceTime with Todd Warden. I'm your man, your host, Todd Warden. Now, this episode is a magic episode, and we're going to get to that in a minute. But you know what? Speaking of magic, I have a little trick up my sleeve. Check it out. Now you see me, now you don't. Wait. That's not right. Um, while I'm trying to figure this out, I think it's time for the new exclusive report. <laughs> Well, it's Halloween season, and here in New York City, we take that very seriously. So I had a moment to go downstairs to Times Square and talk to some of the locals and tourists to see what they're wearing for this holiday season. Check it out. Halloween Times Square. <laughs> right, ladies, so what are you guys being dressed up as Halloween this year? This year, I'm going to be a vampire. Vampire. I'm being the Devil Wears Prada. So you got to get dressed up with Spider-Man? <laughs> So what are you guys dressing up for Halloween this year? Uh, for this year, I'm going to be Velma. I'm going as Kim Possible. I'm going to be Run Unstoppable. Wait, who? Man, come on now. You got that old. <laughs> so we just did this thing where we steal toilet paper from different businesses around here because we can't afford it in New York City. <laughs> Kim Possible. I'm still trying to get past the old comment. You're the one with the white hair. But this is by choice, not by force, so Oh, hell no. What are you doing for Halloween this year? So what's up, man? You look that tired. So what are you doing for Halloween this year? So this kid's pretty much um, taking this kid to the garbage today on Halloween. Yo, man, are you okay? You look like you're eating a lot of bananas. Are you all right? Are you sure? You look like you're about to crap out a lot of banana smoothies. So what are you dressing up for Halloween today, man? Uh, for Halloween this year, I'm being Buzz Lightyear. Buzz Lightyear? So do you have a Woody? Uh, I always have a Woody. <laughs> what are you guys dressing up this Halloween for this year? What? Halloween. Oh, I'm so glad I got that fixed. Guys, we have a great show for you tonight. Hollywood actor and co-star of Fuller House on Netflix. Now magician, my man Michael Campione's in the house. And then later on, country's rising star, Lexi Hayden, is going to be in the house performing a hit song, High Enough, featuring Jason Nick, right here on FaceTime with Todd Wood. You guys stick around, and we'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> the show everyone so my guest tonight is a hollywood actor you know him from the hit show fuller house that you can see right now on netflix but he's also a magician and we're here to talk about his career as an actor but also right now as he astounds the world with his creative art and talent guys please welcome to the show my man michael campion and michael how you doing brother i'm good how about yourself i'm good man i'm good I'm liking the background right now because it looks like it's relaxing. It's got this Tai Chi thing going on. You know, even though I see the trick or treat, we're going to get into that later. But how's <laughs> the weather out there, man? Uh, how's the weather out You know, we had a heat wave of 110 degrees the other day, and that was terrible. And crazy enough, I had magic tricks in my car, and a couple of them broke because they got so hot. And it was, yeah, it was terrible. But it's good now. It's like nice fall weather, so it's good. Well... Hopefully we can get you here in the New York area because New York from fall till is the weather that a lot of people look for. It's that great 70, 65, and 
You know what I'm saying? So hopefully <laughs> we can get you out here because uh, there is another spot out here you can do your thing. But let's recap on what a lot of people know you for. Let's talk about Fuller House. So first of all, congratulations on that show. It's an extended reboot of the iconic Emmy Award winning show, Full House. But this time you get to play uh, Tanner's son, which is pretty cool, right? You play That's Jackson. Right. Um, tell me about how you love being on the show of an iconic show, continuing the legacy of such great acts and great um, characters that were alive in the 80s and 90s as well. It's so crazy that I was on that show. I think about that sometimes. I'm like, that is pretty much the jackpot that I could have hit when I was, you know, growing up. And my my full childhood was on that show from from 12 to 17. Yeah. And um, I grew up a lot. Everyone got to see me grow up. And a lot of the time, you know, people who interview, they're, they they BS about like their cast manager. Like, yeah, they were great, but there was drama behind the scenes. We had pretty much zero drama. Everyone loved each other very much. We They were all bonded from back in the day. And uh, we just had a fun time. It was just fun. Like, I, I can't remember what, well, I mean, obviously there were times where it was, you know, a little, uh, like I was tired or whatnot, but I can't think of an episode where I was like, no, this straight up sucks. And uh, we, we all were just such, we were so tightly bonded. Um, and I still talk to a lot of them today. My fit, like I live right across the street from one of my castmates and we play, uh, Dungeons and Dragons almost weekly. So it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. I could not have asked for a better show. And also the, the legacy, you're right. You're talking about Full House. I loved Full House. So much fun. And I'm just happy to be a part of it really. Yeah. Um, I've watched a number of, uh, episodes and clips, obviously, not just to study up for this interview, even though I had to rewatch them again. Um, really impressed with your acting, man, because the one thing I've noticed with a lot of young stars is a lot of them are very talented, but when they step into a role and they're working with somebody like Candace Cameron, right, who's known for the show, she, you know, really made the show what it is on the Olsen twins, and then you got Saget, God rest his soul, and John Stamos, and the list goes on. Sometimes people get little bit of butterflies you nailed the role the minute you got onto this show seriously so congratulations on creating such a great character and you were such a compliment to the show and then um another great show you were on i'm going to skip right to it uh red ruby which is a teen show about vampires where you uh, <laughs> played a human being that fell in love with a vampire and this show is kind of predicting what you are doing now but let's recap on this show how did you like playing um kind of like honestly a typical uh scientific genre that i think everybody falls in love with especially around this time halloween tell me about that show as well so i i, I filmed red ruby in between the in between seasons and i <laughs> i mean like the biggest thing i had been on at the time was was fuller house obviously and this was i, I honestly had a lot of fun doing it because it was so different, and I am a big fan of, like, weird horror stuff. Um, and so, I, yes, you're right. I got to play, his, his name was Theo, and I was just a normal dude. I got swept up in this whole vampire business, and it it, it does have a little bit, like, um, it, it is it is targeted towards a, a younger audience. So it has, it feels, it feels a little bit like a, like a, like a YA novel in some ways, but I had a lot of fun. I got to do a lot of fun special effects like blood coming out of me, stabbing people, you know, being the like, hero was, was really cool. Uh, I only wish that, that I could have, I could have done something like that now because I have been through so much other, like, you know, I was 16 when I did that. And I, I had like this much sitcom uh, range and I really feel like I could, you know, at this point go, go full on. Cause I, I've been to lots of schools. I just graduated from an acting school. So I, I, I wish I could do that now, but Nevertheless, it was great. I had a wonderful time, and I'm still friends with most of the cast. Listen, you never know. I mean, you're so young. You started out in two great shows when you're young. You have another 40, 50 years to play these type of roles. I'm going to throw it out there. I'm going to let the gods handle that. Um, these genres, yes, we said it was for kids. But listen, adults love. They we do. Love, they, they do. We love Halloween type of movies. Like, listen. Friday the 13th, Halloween, they will never die. And listen, I'm going to tell you right now, 
your role in that kind of foreshadowed what you were already looking to do in terms of this genre. And we'll get a segue into that. Guys, there's a reason why he's wearing Trick or Treat today, even though it's in September. Magic. All right. You um, were a magician pretty much since you've been a kid, right? Your your mom and dad were professional clowns, gave you your first magic kit. Hey, it was, cool. it was, it was my aunt and uncle. It was my aunt and you uncle. Know aunt and uncle? You yeah, want to say aunt mom and dad, so they're going to be like, how did you know? <laughs> Uh, how, did <laughs> how did he know? My bad, aunt and uncle, aunt and uncle. Um, you got your kid when you were a kid. This must have been something where you realized right away, this is what I want to do. Not just, you know, fun-wise, but really, this is kind of what I want to do. Tell me about that first time when you did your first magic trick, bro. Yeah, I remember the second that I fell in love. And yeah, you're you're right. My my aunt and uncle, they they did give me my first magic kit. They were uh professional clowns at the time for Ringling Brothers. So I have a lot of like performers in my family. And um this was just a, a fun, natural step. So what happened was I got it for Christmas, and you know, it's the cheap little like plastic things with the vase and the ball, but there's this one plastic box and it was this like rectangular box and it had a, a hollow it was it was hollow inside except for one of the four well one of the walls was um it was th there, there wasn't a wall there but instead you could see inside of it and it was this little plastic uh uh it was a little square piece of plastic with a hole in it and then there was a string and a washer so if you if you went like this the washer would hit the hole and and it, it couldn't it couldn't come out and i remember when i first learned the secret to how to get the the washer out and to show people this i was absolutely Lord, I was like, I cannot believe I feel like a wizard right now. And so I went around to everyone I could, like my mom, like, mom, look. And I took the washer out of the hole. I was just like, oh my gosh. And of course, everyone was, you know, placating me because I was eight years old. But still, the, the, yeah, right. It's like, oh, wow, that's fun. But still, the, the fact that I could affect someone in that way, mm -hmm. I think I think I learned early on about affecting people with you know, I, I, magic is an art, and and I I learned that pretty early on of you know a performing art and being able to really give people a sense of wonder and amazement. I I just I found that I enjoyed that really early on. I love it. I have to ask you on the two shows that you did, did you try to scare anybody or do any tricks behind the scenes just to entertain some of your uh, colleagues? Is this something <laughs> you did that they're like, don't ever do that again, ever? <laughs> um yeah yeah there <laughs> uh there was this one time where so <laughs> there's this magic trick that i have that involves me taking a knife and cutting my hand and then i smear a bunch of blood on my arm and it reveals a word that 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 they were thinking of and there were i remember i did this one time um <laughs> and they're like what the hell are you doing they were totally freaked out i mean i was like 17 and i yeah I, I think that's the most of our freak it was my teacher and and my co-star sony uh i remember that and that was <laughs> they were like please never do that again i was gonna throw up but i i got a good laugh out of it you're like you need jesus yeah <laughs> yeah listen um here's a cool thing when i was reading the bio uh you actually work there from time to time and i was blessed to go there when i was in la about a year and a half ago I went to the Magic Castle, and uh, the person I went with, Hollywood actress, and we had a great time, and um, I didn't know what I was in store for. And, you know, when I first went there, I was very like, eh, it's people doing magic tricks, I don't want to do, I don't want to go see. She's like, just go, just keep just opening your mind. So I went to the Magic Castle. Let me tell you something. I was so impressed. It was so cool. I loved it so much. You got the red carpet. You got to walk through a bookcase. Yeah. To stand in it. You got great food. How did you land working there? And I know from what I've read, you're impressing the heck out of people. And tell me about the show that you put on over there. I kind of freak people out. Tell me about that. Dude, first of all, Magic Castle is incredible. Nothing like it. And I'm absolutely honored to work there. Uh, so... What happened was uh, I was on the show and yeah. 
um i had i was already doing magic like you know in, in my spare time and this one day i went to this magic shop that's close to me and i saw these kids my age and they were fully dressed in in a suit and i was like oh where where did you guys come from and they go oh we're juniors at the magic castle and i went juniors what is juniors and they said oh it's this division of the magic castle there's the junior program it's from 13 to 21 and you can audition to get in uh they audition twice a year and then and the next one is in a couple of months and i was like the second i heard that i'm like i am going to become a junior member of the magic castle yes bar none like that is my life mission right now so um they were very strict about the rules they said it has to be uh, uh five minutes or less like if it goes one second over five they have a saying it's called 501 Five oh done, and it's just to like say, just to like make sure that you're listening to direction. I don't even know why exactly that they do that, but um, um, I think maybe around like two percent of the kids actually like who who get it, who um, audition actually end up getting in. So yeah. there was a lot of people who came and audition, and I I I get my little close up set. I do five minutes of magic. My mom stopped it because she was in the audience too, and she stopped. It. I was at four minutes and. 58 seconds and that i i was like two seconds away from being disqualified um and it was it was crazy so i got my my letter in the mail saying hey you are now part of magic castle and i went oh my god so i was i was part of the 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 juniors and then then you have to audition to actually start performing there so there, there's a junior group and then there's like the best of the best that get a chance to perform so uh, i had to audition for that as well with a, with a 20 minute close-up set and uh, the rest is history. I've been performing there since I was uh, 16, and I have continued to do so. But I, I just graduated from the junior program last year. So yeah, and so I'm 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 22 now, but I've been performing at night, and uh, it's been really great. Well, let me ask some. Obviously, it sounds to me like magic is your first love, and acting is something that you fell into that you're actually really good at. If you're able to do both, are you able to sustain being an actor and being a musician at the same time? And are, am I able to, to sustain both? To sustain that... both jobs now. Like, what if you really, your career takes off like a blame, right? Or yeah. an angel, where it takes off, but you're also acting, and you're good at both. Are you going to be able to sustain both, and it's going to be an equilibrium that you can work with to actually make that happen? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I I think about that all the time because when I well when I first discovered magic, that actually was after acting. So I yeah. I, I I was acting first, and magic came along uh, more as a hobby. And then as it grew, I was like, I want to be an actor. I want to be an actor. And then I've been acting for a while. And then after Fuller House, uh, the pandemic hit, and so I got really into magic. And now. You're right. It it is it's like balancing act because it, it's been this really odd time here in in Hollywood because not only you know we still have effects from the pandemic, but then we had the writer strike and the actor strike. So from 2020 until 2024, pretty much now, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. we have had this long stint of just instability. So during that time, I have made my career to make all my money doing magic. So right now, it is sustaining me financially. And the great thing about magic is that I can pop in and do it anytime. Like if I if I end up, you know, a lot of people think that the goal might be to go and get a show in in Vegas or something. It's like, oh, if you're there, are you going to be able to to do other things? But really, it's more like I I want to take like I want to carve out some time to make my show, put it up somewhere. Um, like touring, I'm not really too like curious. You know, I mean, like that's right. that would be really cool. But uh, I'm I'm just taking baby steps, and whichever one ends up going, I know I'm not going to get rid of either one. I know that th that both of them will have a place in my life for sure. And mm -hmm. honestly, I'm just I'm just waiting for the opportunity for you know the next the next thing fall on either of them. So I I really don't think it's a matter of like will I be able to sustain more of you know which one will take off first and then and then where's the other one going to live? It's still going to live, but it's not, it's just going to be, you know, it's going to live somewhere else. Well, I loved how you um, excelled your skills during the pandemic because I've spoke about it in other interviews that pandemic created two people, the doers and the past me buyers, right? Passing buyers were the ones that said, oh, damn, I got thousands of hours and thousands of dollars a week. I can just sit here, get fat and watch TV for a year and a half. But the doers got a little fat because I did too, we all did. 
but we were able to really work on what we love to do and hone our craft, right? This show was created during COVID and became number one in three years. So it's about how much do you love to do? And like you said, with the, with the pandemic and then the strike, Hollywood has changed, right? So now you actually have a fallback if you want to look at it that way as well, that you have a job. I know actors, known actors that became acting coaches that are doing stuff on the side. I know an actor, I'm not going to name his name, that became an Uber driver, right? Because they had to pay their bills. You happen to find a passion that can pay your bills, which is really cool. And I love that about you, bro, that you are now talented in two fields, in acting and magic. I could see possibly a role in a, in a show where you are a magician, maybe help solving crimes based on the magic that you just think about that. That would be kind of cool. You know, That's super uh, rad. I would love to do that. That's awesome. I'm just saying, I, I throw a lot of marketing and I guess my, my brain is all <laughs> over the place, man, because I love magic. Magic is kind of, um, it takes you away from the reality world where anything's possible, right? That's what I love about magic. That's what I loved about the Magic Castle. Freaked me out so much. Now you have a show. I believe it starts um, September 21st. How long does this show go for? And where is this going to be located, by the way? Yeah, so it runs from now, uh, from, from September 21st through November 2nd. And um, it's that's just for my first run. I have uh, been in talks with them to have that be a permanent installation. So I, I would love for this to end up being, you know, uh, uh, once a month or twice a month situation. Who knows? I'm not sure. But I definitely from now until the um, very beginning of November. And it is at a place called Beetle House here in L.A. There's also one in New York, which is really cool. And um, yeah, it's like a Tim Burton themed restaurant uh inside they have their own show where there are tim burton characters that come out and they uh sing and they dance and they make funny jokes and it's really great and the, there's halloween themed food halloween themed drinks uh it's halloween 24 7 there and so my my halloween show my close-up 45 minute halloween show is uh just fits right in there i love it now it's called the michael campion haunted mystery show is that correct yeah the yeah uh the Haunted Mystery Show of Magic. It's a pretty long title. <laughs> yeah. Long ass. Listen, <laughs> it's magic, goddammit. Go get your tickets. I gotta tell you, you can't come to New York and do that because Halloween in New York, like New York has a lot of great stuff, but Halloween here, especially around that time, people are dressing up like crazy. You know, you got Comic-Con around that time as well, but I could see you doing a live magic show in Times Square at night, which I think would be insanely dope that would be wild that'd be really cool oh i'm throwing all this that. stuff at you right now man you got to look you got that goatee thing going on you <laughs> got that little magic look your hair growing out people are like that's not the same guy from full of house i'm like guys he's fully grown up man he's got hair he's got everything man this is the same dude which is doing his thing right now now your show um it's not just magic there there's a little scariness involved right you did a little bloody thing behind the scenes. You got knives involved. Is there a favorite magic trick that you love to do? In this show or in like... In general. Or, Let's just say in, in general. general. Is there a trick that you always love to do? That Let's you see. always get people and they're just like, how the heck did you just do that? <laughs> do, you, do you want to see a magic? Do you want to see one of my favorite magic tricks? I would love to see a magic trick. And yo, I'm telling you right now, if anything pops into my screen on my side, <laughs> I'm going to come out. Anthony knows. He'll give me your address. That's what I'm talking about. It's publicist. I will get your address and come out there and kick the crap out of you, man. From oh, my gosh. That would be the most incredible magic trick ever if I showed up behind you. I'm going to be wow. looking around. I'll be like, wait, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. man uh no this this is this is um this is one of my favorite ones i've uh, ever I'll, I'll 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 show you this one here um uh, okay so since 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 we're on since we're on uh zoom you can't like you know choose a card but i'm gonna have you do i'm i'm gonna have you do something okay, okay. uh i want you to imagine that you have a deck of cards in your hands right yeah. now you have 
uh, what we call an invisible deck of, of playing cards. Okay, yeah, you got it. Perfect. Oh, you just dropped all of them. That's cool. Yeah, no, there you go. Now, I want you to pick up 52 pick 52 pick up. You got to pick okay. them. You got to pick them all up now. So, uh, yeah, go and spread out the cards face uh, with, with, with the uh, faces pointing towards you. So you can see every single one of those cards. And once you see a card that you like, uh, go and think about that. Uh, really choose one of these cards, take it out, flip it over so the back is facing you, and then put it back in the deck. So there's one odd placed card. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Now, have you have you imagined what this card is? Yes. Okay, great. You can put those cards away. Put those cards away. For the first time, what was the card that you were thinking of? Oh, you want me to tell you? Yeah, yeah. T tell me. The card was seven of diamonds. The seven of diamonds. You know, it's really weird. As this deck has been sitting here the entire time. Yo, dog. <laughs> nah, man. I don't want to hear it. You said the seven of diamonds. We take a look. Looks like there's one card that has been flipped over. No mm. way. Guys, I'm telling you right now, this is the first time I'm meeting him. I swear on my mother up in heaven. What? <laughs> take a look. That is, in fact, the seven. Freaking way. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Wait, how's that even possible? That that's That's not possible. That is not possible. <laughs> I'm open the screen to show you how we did this. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I don't even want, I don't even want to know how you did that. That's insane. And the thing is, I don't even have a deck. I just thought about it in my brain. We which just means you go right into my brain and saw my card. Okay. That's right. Now I'm picturing a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> if I could do that, I would not be here right now. I would be. Oh, that away. is insane! Oh my thank you, thank no, you. God! No, clap. clap. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Well, that well, you can expect that and way more at my haunted magic show. All right, I'm uh, I, I'm in awe right now. I'm in hundred percent in awe right now. Yo, that is incredible. You got the talent, man. You got the bug, man. Thank you, do. That was insane. absolutely, man. Absolutely, I'm glad you enjoyed it. And you know what? People out here are gonna be like, "No, he edited that." Guys, I'm telling. Then you know what? Then you know what you should do to make people believe. Do a live Instagram or a TikTok and get a bunch of people on there and prove that you can do it live. Or you want yeah, to do it, something like that? It's hard. Yeah, yeah. I've done lives before. It's it's hard for people. You know, all they see something pre-recorded, they go, "Ah, that's." He probably did, you know, some some stuff before, but no, totally, one hundred percent. We have never spoken about this, and um, yeah, but I I can do that live, and I can do many other tricks live. So come and see my show. How about that? That is crazy, guys. Definitely, definitely check this guy out at the Beetle House, right? The Beetle That's House right. in L.A. You can get your tickets on Ticketmaster. You can go to Beetle House LA to check out more events there as well. Now, if they want to follow you, brother, uh, Instagram, that's where I'm on. What is your handle on Instagram so my fans can know where to follow you for all this? Absolutely. My handle is just my name. It's Michael Campion. That's like champion without an H. Michael Campion, champion without an H. Now, before we go, child star. And we're going to say that, Child Star, is there any inspirational words you can give some people that are looking to get into the Hollywood industry, as well as the magic industry as well, the luck to look to? When you get into my field, being a talk show host, make sure you know how to speak. <laughs> That's a, that'd be a good idea. Yeah, yeah. You know how to ask a question. It's been a long day. But do you have anything inspirational you can tell these young generation kids on what to do, what not to do to get into these type of fields? Absolutely. You know, it takes, how do I say this? So when I first got into it, it was purely out of the love of the craft. And where I have gotten to so far is one of my favorite quotes is um, uh, luck is just when preparation meets opportunity. And I was very prepared. I made sure that the things I could control 
my craft, my, you know, the, the, the place that where I was, was absolutely ready to meet those opportunities. And a lot of people think that, you know, they can just come out here for a year to LA and like be an actor, but no, you're either in or you're out. Same thing with being a magician, you know, you can have it as a side hobby and that's, that's totally fine if you want to do that. But if you're going to, if you're really serious about it and you want to make it out here, you're really in or you're out. And most of the time, your love and your passion will shine through. And sometimes you'll, uh, you'll find out what, what you actually like. It's very testing out here. So I'd say that if, if you have the bug, absolutely come out here, commit a hundred percent. And if you feel like you have something similar, if it's not that you'll find, you'll find out really quick what it is that you actually want to do. So both ways it's, it's very, um, pick, pick up the art that you want to do and, and make it no better time than now. That's what I have to say. I love it. I love it. Guys, you heard this gems from an actor right here. You can definitely see Fuller House on Netflix. I know that's where they were airing it. Uh, you also got uh, uh, Red Ruby, right? Red Ruby. That's on Amazon Prime and also Apple. Definitely check them out at this Beetle House in LA. Go to the Magic Castle. I'm telling you, if you see Magic Castle, check that out. Follow him because Magic Castle is a trip within itself. You can get food, you can go to all these different rooms, see this guy perform, and you can get freaked out like me with the Seven of Diamonds live right in front of your face. But right here, I got my man Michael on FaceTime with Todd Warden. Michael, thank you for coming by, man. Thank you for showing me the tricks and the talents. And you got a long career in this industry, man. So congratulations. Thank you very much, Todd. I appreciate it. So don't go away, guys. We're coming right back. It's Country's Rising Star, Lexi Hayden, performing a hit song, High Enough, featuring Jason Nix, right here on FaceTime with Todd Warden. So stick around. <laughs> What's up, y'all? This is Lexi Hayden. You're about to watch the premiere of my brand new video, High Enough, on The Todd Wharton Show.
just want to take a moment and thank my guests, Michael Campion and Lexi Hayden, for being on FaceTime with Todd Warden. Michael, congratulations on your career up to this point, Fuller House. I love the show. Netflix, guys, check it out. And listen, being a magician, that's a hard thing to do. But you got me. You got the talent. You got the skills. And I can't wait to come out to L.A. and see you in person and witness that firsthand because I'm still a little freaked out that you got the card right. It was like sitting back there. I had no idea. That was insane. And guys, definitely check them out on all social media platforms. And don't forget to check out my girl, Lexi Hayden, Country's Rising Star, her music high enough, and other songs as well as streaming now on all social media platforms. And you will not be disappointed. She is a major talent. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode because you know I did. But at the end of the day, like I always say, if you're not making a pass in your life, at least I do it. Take care, guys. I'll see you soon.